Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Sorry for the slight delay, but that's, I guess, normal acad academic quarter. Um, my name is Luca, and uh, I have the distinct pleasure to welcome you to the first ever uh, Eternity Conference. Uh, woo! So, it has been a long journey, and especially in organizing all of this, especially with uh, doing all of our daily tasks. So I want to thank everyone involved in the organization, especially the outside team. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. And if, if I was an asshole, I'm sorry. It's not me, it was the stress. Uh, I'm not going to uh, take too much of your time. Uh, I just want to say that um, I think we're all going to remember this moment because this is the first time that the whole community, the whole ecosystem um, came in one place. We have very diverse group of people. We have developers, we have lawyers, tax advisors, business guys, artists, all around. And this will create a beautiful nexus of eternity universe in the years to come. So, um, I would like to, you to welcome uh, on stage uh, Yanislav Malachov, the founder of Eternity, for um, the keynote okay. speech. Can I have her? Yeah, dear, dear ladies and gentlemen, dear Eternistas, welcome to the Eternity Universe One conference. We are gathering here today and tomorrow to talk about fundamental cryptographic technology and its applications and also its impact on the society on this planet. First I want to say thank you for being here today with me, with us together. I'm very thankful to stand here today in front of you. Without you this would have not been possible. And it makes me really proud to see how such a great team got together over the past years to collaborate on Eternity Blockchain. And moreover, it's not only a team anymore we have here today. It's the Eternity ecosystem, the Eternity universe. And we together, we, get, we really get things done. In my talk today, I want to tell you a little bit more about my story with Eternity Blockchain. I want to talk about the past, the present, and the future. It started in 2016, when I decided to create a Liechtenstein-based company. Why Liechtenstein? Because of favorable regulatory environments and uh, approachable governments. In Liechtenstein, it was possible to talk directly to decision makers instead of writing expensive paper letters via lawyers. In Liechtenstein, it was possible for me to create a company and provide the base capital with cryptocurrency and nothing else. In Liechtenstein, people are friendly, open and global-minded. I felt very welcomed from the very beginning. My Liechtenstein experience with Eternity has gotten quite some attention in the local and global press. And at some point, the journalists seem to be more interested in my Liechtenstein story than um, what we are really about here, this uh, fundamental new technology. So smaller, smaller countries can innovate faster, and if they want, like Liechtenstein, this can go really, really quick. And with a new blockchain act, a framework for the new token economy gets established. So, a little bit more forward in April and June 2017, the Eternity establishment sold Eternity AE tokens to fund the technological and community development. Consequently, we're, we were able to find some of the best developer talent of this world to create a product which really stands out. Um, from the beginning, we were very much about public um, and open, transparent and open source development. So the real open source development. And today we can say that for sure we have created something special. 
Moreover, Eternity is one of the few projects which got funded in the 2017 token sale wave, which still exists, and we're doing quite strong. For us, it has been a very exciting journey, which still continues. The Eternity mainnet launch last year in November um, was a big milestone for us. The mainnet has been very stable since then. Meanwhile, we saw the Minerva and the Fortuna hard fork, which introduced a number of improvements and new features. And now we are just in front of the Re Lima release. With Lima, a new era begins. The on-chain governance system will be introduced and it will allow users to vote with their tokens on anything of importance. Lima also introduces, includes the introduction of the new FATE virtual machine, FATE for Fast Eternity Transaction Engine. As a preliminary result, we metered that the FATE virtual machine is 10 times more space, space efficient than the other big virtual machine in the space. <laughs> um, which results, I mean, this fact results in reducing transaction size, which means also um, lower cost for the transactions, as well as um, a smaller blockchain size, which is, of course, very beneficial for scalability. People often say that you need to be 10 times better to really make it. Uh, we achieved, I mean, we did it, and we achieved an order of magnitude efficiency upgrade with the FATE. Moreover, as a new feature, an auction system for the Eternity naming system will be launched. Don't forget to register your names. It's a unique opportunity to participate here early. Yeah, um, so far so good. Now, more about the future, which excites me really the most. <laughs> but um, actually, a little bit more context on the history to talk about the future. So we are now in the transition of the age of paper to the age of silicon technology. When, we f when the first version of the internet, the ARPANET, got created in 1969, cryptography was still in its, in its infancy. Asymmetric public key cryptography was not even invented until 1976 by Diffie and Hellman. And um, asymmetric, oh. um, when the web uh, got created in the 90s, cryptography was still under strict export restrictions by the United States. Even today, more than a billion people live in countries where the use of cryptography is restricted. Times do change, as we know, and soon blockchains will power everything of public importance. For many people, it is very clear now that the internet and the web needs to be rebuilt on a new open source and cryptographically secure foundation. Blockchain technology is an enabler. It enables people to create and nurture their digital identities. It enables people to do transactions globally, locally, nearly instant, and almost for free. Blockchain technology enables new models of fundraising and governance. It's, it allows individuals and organizations to collaborate efficiently on the new global markets it's powering. Glo and public verifiability of all important things will become mandatory for the future. And every co-owned object and shared resource will be eventually tokenized. Ownership and access will be tracked by blockchains. This will lead to a huge efficiency upgrade for the global society. Shared assets will become much more liquid and everything can be traded, provided that there is interest. Blockchain technology enables more efficient collaboration, which eliminates the need for a central government in control of the systems for tracking assets, money, identities, notarization, and more. In the long run, only governments providing a framework for the use of blockchain technology for its citizens will survive. 
Governments which don't adapt will become obsolete and replaced by blockchain governance systems opt-in for its users. We are living in an increasingly global and instant world. Physical borders are increasingly disappearing. The smartphone society will be soon replaced by an AR or goggle society and eventually our brains will merge with the digital technology and our minds will form a global hive mind which will solve problems and create opportunities much quicker than anything we have had before. I want to inspire you to create technology which helps people, human-centered, enabling and empowering technology. Actually, pure technology is not what we actually want. We want use for people. Therefore, love what you do and do it for the benefit of humanity. I wish you a great time at the conference. Thank you. Okay. Shall we do a short Q&A session? What yeah, do you think? We can do. Okay, any questions? If you have a question, raise your hand. I'm going to throw you the mic. Okay. What's the vision of uh, Eternity? How do you think it will develop in the following years? Following years for Eternity. Uh, so we need more transactions, we need more users, and uh, I hope, uh, we, we all hope uh, that uh, this awesome technology we built will be used by um, many more people around the world, so, um, which will eventually hopefully lead that the Eternity blockchain will become an integral part of the, let's say, the cryptographic backbone of this new internet I just mentioned. Hi. Um, what are the biggest challenges Eternity is facing right now? Not just techno technologically, but also um, when it comes to, uh, yeah, social. Hmm. This conference was indeed a challenge as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, a very social challenge. Otherwise, um, hmm. social challenges. And we need to grow our community, which is a social challenge. Um, but this is... We, uh, I guess we need to... I'm not sure what is a social challenge. Can you, can you explain your question a bit better? Yes, um, because from my experience, at least with uh, DAOs, for example, um, it's very hard to get people on the same line on your um, values and principles. Mm -hmm. So with regarding to narrative building, getting everybody at this, on the same line, having the same vision um, towards working uh, for the success of the Eternity blockchain. Of course, this um, applies to all other projects on top of mm -hmm. the blockchain itself, but I was wondering um, team-wise, how you guys are managing to keep everybody in, you know, not in check, but on the same, on the same line. Yeah, uh, it's a decentralized project, so we're inviting also a very diverse set of people, which uh, makes it uh, often quite impossible to bring them to the same um, line. Um, but uh, fundamentally, I mean, I mentioned this also in my talk, we need to create technology which helps people to get their stuff done or improve their stuff. And I think this is something which everybody should agree on and their fundamental rules, which are probably older than blockchain technology, which people should uh, just uh, follow. Uh, yeah. Hi. So I take it that uh, you are planning to build a miner that people can run in their brains eventually. Um, so assuming that we can do that, uh, we have this thing of large inequalities worldwide. Uh, do you think that uh, poor people might then start selling their brain capacity for mining? <laughs> if so, do you think it's a bad thing? And if so, what do you think uh, we can do against that? Uh, <laughs> not sure if this is a bad thing. Um, <laughs> Like, <laughs> it enables lots of people who uh, currently uh, don't get anything for their brain capacity because they're too isolated from the existing financial system to get paid, essentially. So it's a big uh, opportunity, I think, or it will be, for many people, a big opportunity. For others, it's more a threat if they don't adapt the technology. Anyone else? 
If not, we're going to need to move with the schedule. Thank you very much, Yanni. Thank you.